Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Hiroja Shai. Hello, and welcome to F Society IRC podcast. I'm your moderator, Hiroja Shai, and this is the sixth episode of our seven part series on the seven films that have influenced or have some kind of thematic influence on the television show, Mr. Robot. So this review is a movie review of a New Zealand film called The Quiet Earth. Um, It's a seminal science fiction film that my understanding is considered like the number one, well before I guess you can say the Lord of the Rings trilogy films um, or Hobbit films. As far as Seminatic or what is it called? Cinephiles, uh, number one film coming out of New Zealand, uh, The Quiet Earth. Uh, the film is directed by Joff, uh, Joff Murphy. It stars uh, Bruno Lawrence as Zach Cobson, Allison Rolchich as uh, jo- Joanne, Pete Smith as I, I, I Pi, and This film is about a man named Zap Hobson who wakens to find himself alone in the world. In a desperate attempt to search for others, he finds only two who have their own agenda. Uh, This film is probably one of the most unsettling films I have ever seen when it comes to the kind of post-apocalyptic or man-slash-person-alone films. Uh, Even more unsettling than, uh, what's that? freaking Tom Hanks movie um Castaway as far as being alone by themselves as an individual this film as far as the um, kind of sci-fi elements is very you can say almost hard sci-fi it is based off of a book but is heavily influenced by stuff movies like um I are not movies but books I am legend um what is another film um, it's considered the unofficial remake of a film called uh, The World, the Flesh, and the Devil, which was a doomsday film of a similar pre- premise of people alone finding themselves alone on the earth and something has happened and everyone is basically gone except for these very f- handful, and in this case, three individuals. Um, it stars Harry Balafonte. I've actually never heard of this film. I might end up uh, checking it out. But it's it's one of those kind of end of the world things, films. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's very grounded as far as uh, films go. There's not some kind of like weird, um, you know, like zombie outbreak or vampires like I Am Legend or Walking Dead or Night of the Living Dead. Uh, it doesn't have some kind of mystical, fantastical element like The Stand. Uh, which, you know, the fantastical element of the stand doesn't come into it much later until after, like, the plague um, is unleashed. In this case, the plague, unlike the zombie plague, um, is like a flu virus where people are di- are dead. There's, like, no physical bodies to indicate that death has occurred in the film. So it's basically this guy, when we first encounter him, you know he's a scientist. He's working in some kind of lab. Uh, he wakes up. Um, kind of goes to work, kind of has a weird flash of his boss, his flash of light, and there's basically there's nobody. It's just him for like the longest time. And have you ever seen that movie, uh, not movie, but the television show, The Last Last Man or Last Standing Man? It was on like on Fox. It's like a comedy. Um, the very first few episodes where that character is <clears throat> doing crazy shenanigans stuff, like hit you know robbing banks and play acting with food and smashing cars um he does some of that in the in the very beginning once he realizes he is stuck here and he doesn't know how he can can get out of here Uh, the film you know has a quite a bit of stillness to it which i think it has a significant element thematic elements to the mr robot series because there's a lot of stillness in mr robot a lot of very quiet still moments where there's not like tremendous amount of dialogue or expression going on and it it helps um, the ambience of a almost dread on the television show when you have those moments very much so in this film 
It is one of these films that kind of exemplifies the trope of a post-apocalyptic world of loneliness. Um, the act of the device of the unknown origin, um, which we find out in the movie, uh, ships the very fabric reality and moving characters in places in which they have no control and say in. Um, in this case, this film has shifted uh, three characters, uh, the Zach Hobson, Allison Rulledge, and Pete Smith. Um, Pete Smith is um, a Maori. Is that how you say it? Make sure I say his particular tribe correctly. A Maori man. Um, he's actually a well-known actor in the New Zealand film. Film, um, You know, of course, a love triangle does, in fact, form between these three characters. Um, Zach actually encounters Joanne first. And they do, you know, engage in sexual intercourse. He at first didn't think she was really there. She didn't think he was really there. Um, but they do make a, some of a connection. But Zach, he's he's a bit of a bore. He's a scientist. He may, in fact, actually be responsible for the fact that the, um, they are in their present situation that they are in. Uh, he finds evidence of, besides the deserted city, uh, when he goes back to his laboratory, uh, you know, wrecked planes, um, a message that indicated that the project he was working on was complete. So he, you know, he has a bit crazy, he encounters Joanne, has a bit of a, uh, a sense of each other, but they, they start seeking out and saying, you know, since I'm here, you're here, there might be other people here. And that's when they meet a pie and, they, and then the love connection triangle forms. A pie is actually more uh, of our personality than Zach and Joanne has attracted them to him. And they start talking to each other and they realize around the same time that the that they wound up finding themselves in this place. They find out that, um, you know, a pie was drowned in a fight. Joanne was electrocuted by the hairdryer and Zach attempted suicide. And he realizes that maybe he, not only these events might coincide what's happening, but his project that he was working on might be the reason why they are kind of in this bubble universe, if you will. So they decide that they're going to go out and go and basically destroy the lab that Zach was um, working on. And they're going to drive this truck of explosives. And, you know, they're going to send it hurling down. And it will cause it, you know, things to, the thing to, to, to be destroyed. They'll be like away from the, they're going to send it to the facility. They're going to use a uh, remote device. Um, they're going to be far away from the town so the radiation and stuff doesn't get to them. And it will blow this up and then maybe they will stop about, what's happening happening to them so joanne up high you know they're they're having sex and they realize zach is gone and he's the one out driving the the truck to the to the uh, laboratory because he feels guilt and he also realizes that you know joanne's not going to be with him and um a big another big flash the same type of flash that he experienced that got him here and the other two experience he experiences uh but this time it's like a you know it's a red light. Uh, he's surrounded by a dark tunnel. And then Zach finds himself uh, face down on a beach. And there are strange cloud formations resembling like, um, I don't know what you can say they resemble. They look like kind of very alienish. They kind of look like uh, when rain um, has happened and then the clouds are kind of dripping down or about to happen and kind of dripping down, if you will. And uh, he finds himself, you know, on this beach in front of a body of water. And he looks out into the horizon and there's a, it's Saturn. Somehow he's on a, the moon. One of the moons is Saturn and he's looking at Saturn itself. And that's how the film ends. And it's very bizarre, very, a very, like I said, it's a very unsettling, weird, very hard sci-fi film. And... You know, is one of the weirdest ones I've ever seen. Um, it's one of those that kind of sits with you, because you you don't know really what to to make of the situation that um, they are in. You know, what a, is this about? You know, religion? Are they in some kind of purgatory and they're you know going to the next level or, or or next multiverse? You don't really know like what the fabric of reality kind of constraints are going on in the film, and it's really not that too important because it's really about the dynamics of these three characters and them trying to survive in a world where they are the only ones and then trying to figure out how they can be with other people 
And this is where I think the influence of Quiet Earth is when I saw this on the Mr. Rod, when I saw the season three finale where Elliot and Darlene are at the terminal, they're at the computer and they're going to undo the hack. They have the keys, um, they have everything they need and they're going to basically uncrypt all the E-Corp servers and it's going to bring basically all of E-Corp's uh, infrastructure back online. So all the mortgages, all the accounts, all that information is going to be back up. And they do that. And it felt like once they hit enter, once Elliot did that, it felt like it felt like Elliot was going to a a new world, if you will. He had opened himself up to new possibilities. This is the ending of one existence in the beginning of something completely different. Everything that had to happen had happened with F Society and the hack and the chaos and the fallout, if you will. That stuff has ended and this there's this new world, this new completely utterly different path that Elliot is on. A completely different world, if you will, um, that he is on the precip precipice of. And we're about to find out with the, the season four um when the season four comes um, back, what that what that world's going to be, and that was just it just instantly struck me as uh, as soon as he hit that enter, and boom, you know, everything is is going to come back, if you will. I also think at the same time, um, since we don't really truly fundamentally know completely about what the Washington Township device is. There's been hints, theories about, you know, alternate and multiple, multiple universes, time travel, um, that maybe the device has a kind of a, a play, if you will, in the sense of, of utterly changing the world, or maybe it already has changed the world once and could change the world again. We really don't know. This, these are the answers we're going to get, um, for next season and I think that something like the quiet or this post-apocalyptic you know vision of what the end of the world looks like really fits in with the kind of realism that is uh, Mr. Robot it's not this fantastical elements where you have the, like the walking dead and the Everyone's reanimated and they come back and they're trying to kill everybody. You have this really grounded, uh, fully realized world. Even the science upon which propelled these individuals into this either a uh, pocket universe or a multiverse uh, has a basis in, in, in science in, in some form of reality, if you will. And so it's not very like make believe or you have to really stretch your mind in believing that this was not something probable or even possible. So that's it. Um, I highly recommend watching this film, just even if you have no attachment to Mr. Robot or you don't think it really has much of a mark or influence on the show, uh, is a great sci-fi, hard I would say hard sci-fi uh, film out of New Zealand. And uh, I do think it is uh, streaming on one of the more like obscure services. And you can also, uh, you know, as always, buy or rent, rent the film itself. So I'm logging off for now and until next time. This has been a Rosha Shine Space Odyssey Network production.